Well, then our next speaker is standing right next to me, Prasanna Krishnamurthy, who's uh, associate professor here in bioengineering at UAB, uh, who's going to talk to us today about cellular crosstalk and cardiac remodeling and repair. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, uh, Michael. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jay, um, uh, GQ, and Joel for this uh, great program and uh, for the opportunity to uh, share my uh, uh, data and publish once. Um, the title of my talk is uh, Cellular Crosstalk in uh, Cardiac Remodeling and Repair. The good news is there is no stem cell in this talk. So uh, this, uh, the entire work is uh, done by talented scientists in my lab, um, uh, Prem Kumar, and uh, all of the data that I'm going to share today is uh, unpublished, unpublished and uh, it is preliminary. Uh, so uh, the overview of this present talk is that uh, we are looking at how hyperglycemia alters uh, macrophage function in terms of their uh, secretion exosomes and how that alters uh, uh, mRNA stabilizing protein and its impact on uh, various cell types. And uh, in the interest of time today, uh, we are just going to focus macrophage and uh, fibroblast crosstalk um, uh, through uh, exosomes. So as you can see, uh, this is a, a map of uh, uh, diabetes epidemic and uh, the light blue is uh, uh, light blue is around uh, 2.5 prevalence of diabetes and uh, the dark blue is around uh, 15 percent and uh, we here in Alabama we are at 11.5 uh, percent prevalence as you can see uh, uh, diabetes remains the seventh leading cause of death in the United States so uh, as you know, diabetes increases the risk for cardiovascular diseases. There are uh, a lot of uh, disease processes or biological processes that diabetes could affect, uh, including cardiac fibrosis and inflammation. And uh, as you know, uh, uh, macrophage dysfunction is at the center of most of this uh, uh, biological processes. So uh, that's one reason why we focused on uh, macrophage, uh, studying macrophages in this uh, project. You can go on to debate whether macrophages are good guys or bad guys, and uh, as you can see, there is a list of uh, things where they have a beneficial role and, uh, and they also play a detrimental role uh, when there's chronic inflammatory uh, uh, response. So uh, most of these disease processes, uh, they all depend on uh, gene expression, which again is regulated by a balance of uh, synthesis of RNA and then uh, their degradation, their translocation from the nucleus to the uh, cytoplasm. So um, the degradation of mRNA has been shown to uh, play an important role uh, in development, uh, in response to environmental uh, cues, as well as uh, in metabolic uh, signals. So one of the proteins that we are most interested here is uh, uh, human antigen R, HER, uh, which is a mRNA stabilizing protein. And uh, it is, it goes by other names as well, uh, which is ELAB1. Uh, what it does is, it binds to AU-rich elements uh, called as ARE in the three untranslated region of uh, mRNA. And then it stabilizes various genes that are involved in uh, inflammation, cell death, fibrosis, and recently they have shown its role in uh, uh, stem cell function also. So most of these processes can uh, alter cardiac uh, remodeling and uh, dysfunction. So the motivation or inspiration came from the study where uh, uh, myocardial injury uh, in mice increased the expression of uh, hoar level in the myocardium. So we went on to see, uh, went on to check where, where exactly this protein is uh, 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 localized. Uh, as you can see, immunostochemistry shows that uh, by morphology, they are 
mostly localized in the inflammatory cells or uh, it could be fibroblast as well, but not in the cardiomyocytes. So uh, therefore, we uh, are interested to see how uh, diabetes or specifically hyperglycemia alters um, whole expression in the macrophages because diabetes is associated with chronic inflammation and hold plays a major role in regulating most of these genes. So uh, we are under the impression that uh, hyperglycemia could be altering uh, hold expression and function. And then we are also interested uh, in uh, looking at if this particular protein, which plays a major role in microRNA biogenesis and mRNA stability, could also be transferred into exosomes and uh, if they could alter the function of target cell. In this case, uh, we are studying fibroblast. And uh, then we want to know what is their implication on uh, a disease process. For example, uh, angiotensin-induced cardiac fibrosis. So uh, the first uh, experiment that we did was uh, we checked the expression of her uh, in response to uh, uh, low and high glucose, uh, raw cells are uh, mouse monocyte macrophage cell lines. As you can see, uh, it increased both expression of uh, mRNA and uh, there was a moderate increase in HER. So we really scratched our head uh, what is the real uh, uh, mechanism of uh, uh, poor-mediated uh, inflammation in this, uh, in this disease condition. So as you can see, who has uh, three different domains and it is connected through a hinge region. And uh, the function of her is regulated through various processes. As you can see on the left, uh, most of these kinases can phosphorylate and um, you can see the effect on those, uh, effect on the uh, herd. So uh, it can lead to uh, translocation of herd from the uh, nucleus to the cytoplasm and that's how it function could be uh, regulated. So uh, we were curious what is happening in case of uh, hyperglycemia condition. So uh, as you can see, uh, in control conditions, um, it is mostly localized in the nucleus. And uh, when we expose these cells to high glucose for 24 to 48 hours, you can see uh, the uh, whole expression is also seen in uh, the cytoplasm. So uh, in the previous slide, I showed that PKC uh, phosphorylates uh, her and it could lead to translocation from the nucleus to cytoplasm. So if that is the case, um, if you use PKC uh, delta inhibitor, uh, it should inhibit high glucose induced uh, translocation and that is what we observed in this case. So. Uh, so I will switch to uh, exosome. We are now interested um, how this um, hole, um, which is in the macrophages, get transferred to other cell types and how it could regulate uh, the function of other cell types. So uh, as you can see here, uh, the principle is, uh, one of the example here is cardiac fibroblasts. They secrete a lot of uh, exosomes, which are enriched in micron A21, and uh, that could affect the function of uh, cardiomyocyte and that could have an effect on cardiac um, hypertrophy. So uh, as I said, uh, we are interested, uh, uh, we are asking this question if HER also kind of is packaged in the exosomes and if it is transferred to the target cell, that could be the, uh, um, that could be, uh, uh, that could be the major mechanism how it could be regulating the target cell function. So uh, that's it. And we asked, so uh, what we did was we extracted or isolated exosomes from these cells um, and then we characterized them. The size was around uh, 140 uh, nanometer. Transmission electron microscope shows a characteristic uh, cup-shaped uh, structure and uh, they do express all the markers that you would expect to see on uh, exosomes. And interestingly, we saw that whole protein is in those exosomes as well. So now the question is, uh, uh, as we are going to study its interaction with uh, uh, fibroblast, uh, in this case, NIS333 uh, uh, cells, fibroblast, what we did was we collected those exosomes from these uh, macrophages, which are treated with high glucose or low glucose. We labeled them with PKH26 and we threw them fibroblast. 
And uh, here you can see the, uh, um, the fibroblast could uptake all of those uh, uh, exosomes. Uh, PK is uh, 26, red is exosomes, and these fibroblasts are marked with uh, uh, polyiron. So we wanted to see what is the effect of uh, HOR on the target cell. So what we did was we knocked down HOR using lentivirus in macrophages. And uh, here you can see we could confirm that uh, using Western blot as well as in, uh, in um, immunohistochemistry. And there was no HOR in knockdown cells. So that was successful there. And uh, what we did was we exposed these cells to uh, high and low glucose for 72 hours. We collected exosomes. We threw them on fibroblast and looked at the uh, inflammatory and fibrogenesis response genes in this fibroblast. I'll not go into the details. Um, uh, you can see here um, when these fibroblasts were treated with uh, exosomes from macrophage exposed to high glucose, there is increase in a lot of uh, pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrogenesis response genes. And this was kind of reversed or partially reversed uh, when you knock down HOR in uh, macrophages. So same uh, is the case with most of the uh, inflammatory related genes. And uh, there are a panel of genes that I'm going to show. I'm not going to go into the details of each of these uh, uh, genes. So we saw that pattern there. So uh, to study the uh, uh, biological relevance in vivo, what we did was we used angiotensin-induced cardiac fibrosis model. So if you have macrophages, if you have high glucose-treated macrophages, which has more uh, whole expression, and if that is secreted through uh, the exosomes, and if you knock down that particular uh, hole, probably you have to see a beneficial effect. So this is all uh, basic cell biology experiments. So what we uh, did was XYO, we transfected bone marrow derived macrophages with uh, control or uh, uh, whole SHR and lentivirus based knockdown. And then uh, we infused uh, angiotensin for two weeks using mini osmotic pumps. These are the pumps here. And then intravenously at day one, what we did was we injected these bone marrow macrophages, which are either deficient in her or uh, the control uh, SSRNA treated cells. So as you can see, the uh, mice that received control macrophages, there was uh, increased uh, interstitial fibrosis as well as uh, perivascular fibrosis here. So the mice uh, that received um, uh, macrophages deficient in her, uh, there was reduced interstitial fibrosis. And to our surprise, there was a robust decrease in uh, perivascular fibrosis. So in summary, I convinced that uh, hyperglycemia increases her expression in the macrophages. And that is also packaged in the exosomes, and that could be transferred to the uh, fibroblast and has an effect on uh, fibroblast in terms of inflammation and fibrogenesis response. And uh, you saw that uh, if macrophages deficient in HOR were injected, uh, then you saw uh, there was partial reversal of uh, fibrogenesis response. So uh, our future studies will involve uh, uh, abrogating the host macrophages and then injecting. Now, uh, in this previous study, we don't know whether it's the host macrophage or the macrophages that we injected. So uh, we are um, planning to do those experiments. So I will stop there and thank all the people involved in the uh, study. Uh, these are the people involved in from my lab, and uh, Prem is the one who is involved uh, or leading this project and our collaborators both at UAB and uh, as well as at Temple University, and I'd like to acknowledge the funding sources as well. So um, I'll be happy to address any questions. Thank you for the good talk, and we're still on time, so it's time for some questions. Is there a particular set of RNA, mRNA, that HER binds to? Ah, yes, this is a good question. Um, 
as I showed in the second or third slide, uh, HER only binds to those mRNA that has AU rich elements in them or a sequence of AU rich elements. So uh, it doesn't regulate all the uh, uh, other uh, mRNA. Only those mRNA that has AU rich elements in them um, HER can bind to those sequences. Um, and if, if I could just follow up on that question. So um, you, met, you, you knocked down HER and it, um, modified the behavior of the macrophage in a positive manner. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, do you know what, it's, what uh, the knockdown has done to the stability of, a, is it a, a particular set of RNA that's uh, uh, destabilized, maybe an inflammatory set of RNAs? Yeah, that's a great question. So I didn't show that. I will be happy to show you those slides uh, during the lunch time. So we also check what is the effect of hold knockdown on the macrophage biology itself in terms of their M1, M2 phenotype and their uh, secretion of pro-inflammatory and uh, fibrogenesis response genes. So we found it, it kind of moves uh, the balance, tilts the balance towards M2 phenotype. And we also have shown previously, we have published that in PASAP, um, that uh, his hold can stabilize mRNA of TGF beta, MMP9, IL1 beta, and TNF alpha, uh, even VEGF for that matter. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you.